morning. Oh, come on. Good morning. All right. It's, I am delighted to be here this morning and to talk to you. This is my very first KCO meeting to get to address, and I want to thank your wonderful leadership, uh, Jim Henderson, the CEO, just doing a great job with this organization. I've also got to say how much I have enjoyed sitting this morning and hearing uh, my colleague from the White House, Doug Holscher, and it's sort of like I get to repeat many of the things that he talked about. And then I know that our hair is the same color, but I have to tell you, I watched Jamie Comer grow up and enter politics at a very young age, and his grandfather, Mr. Harlan Comer, was my contact person in the Reagan campaign in Monroe County, and what a pleasure it has been to see him prosper and do so well. And I want to say about Congressman Massey, you know, I visited him, it's been eight years ago, in his uh, county judge office in Lewis County, and I think he was probably the first elected official that actually could understand when we were started talking about technology and broadband because he got it and it was a fabulous opportunity to get to talk with him and so we appreciate his leadership in Washington and I so enjoy uh, getting to meet with his staff right here in Kentucky all the time all of the members of our delegation so we are going to talk today about how we can work together if there is one word that I want you to remember as we go through this 15 minutes, and I want to say I'm delighted to be here, but 15 minutes for me is a real challenge. I'm actually going to set my little phone clock right here because I am passionate about rural development and I could talk all day. So we're going to try to keep me on time to respect Jim. But when we talk today, I want you to think about how we can partner. You know, our problems are too big and often our challenges are too great for us to think that we can do this alone. How we can bring together our relationships, our strengths and our assets and how I can help funnel your tax dollar, your federal money back into your rural communities. We will do better if we can do this through our partnership. So, Partnering for prosperity for rural communities is my catchphrase today. But I'm going to make it a little bit simple here. We're going to start with what I would call the bread and butter of rural development and the, the programs that you all probably know best. I'll also tell you that I'm not much on this technology working it up here, so bear with me on it. But the, I'm going to talk about the ABCs of rural development. And first and foremost, the A is for affordable housing. We have 425 multifamily housing units in Kentucky, which equals 11,000 apartments or dwellings that are in your communities that are home to your voters and your constituents. You may not think of rural development when you think of those housing complexes. What you might think about is the old, what we call the old Farmers Home Administration, the single family housing loans that we make. We have in this administration given 800 families the financing and made it available where they may not have a down payment where they're more stretched in their budgets but through our programs they can afford their home and sometimes that's our young people our couples first home and ladies and gentlemen you know as well as I do that one of our biggest challenges is keeping our young people in our rural communities and how better could we do that than to help help, help them get a foothold, have a home, a place, a sense of belonging. We're proud of those 800 families and we hope to continue to do many, many more. As elected officials, you sometimes must get asked to help with something and you think, who would even think that? I have no idea how to help you with that particular program. So this is something that I keep in mind for you to remember. When you're asked about home repair, now we're talking about a little couple from Burgey, Kentucky. We were able through our home repairs to give them a $5,630 loan, a $7,500 grant, and they replaced their roof, the gutters, the sizing. They were able to do a double hung window and repair their front porch. Small ways, if you will think about rural development, that we may help you enhance your local community and help you serve your constituents better. Since two, January 2017, we have helped over 900 low and very low income families make home repairs for safer and more energy efficient homes. So the B is for our business programs. Now in our business programs, our market there, the people who are eligible are for-profit businesses in your communities. 
private for-profit businesses. We have over 30 programs. I can't even name them all. So you have to call us and we have to be at your table to say, we may have a program to help you on that, all right? 30 programs that are focused on businesses. Since January 2017, we have invested in Kentucky 9.6 million in grant monies and 121 million in loans for some of our small and medium-sized private businesses. A good example might be our value-added grants. We love these grants. We gave a $106,000 grant to Equius Run Vineyard to expand their market outreach and their customer base. I hope they invite me back for a tasting opportunity sometime, Judge. In our, one of our others is our REAP program or our Rural Energy for America program. We helped a restaurant in downtown Frankfurt to redo all of their lighting and their HVAC to make it more energy efficient. And then the other side of that is we gave a $264,000 grant to East Kentucky Power. If you're driving down Interstate 64 and you see that big solar farm, that is a part of our investment in our renewable and energy efficient program for Kentuckians. And probably the one we hear the most about is our business and industry loan program. Low interest loans, extended terms, and just one quick example of that is a $7.3 million loan that we made to a, a company called ColorPoint. And it allowed ColorPoint, which grows flower, bedding flowers, like we all love, right? And it goes to Lowe's and Home Depot's. And they have 40 acres under roof, 40 acre greenhouse. Our loan to them had allowed them to make an extension of 10 acres to their original complex. That's how we help to grow jobs, create wealth, increase payrolls in your communities, and be a partner with you in your economic development efforts in your communities across the Commonwealth of Kentucky. The one you are most likely to know more about is our community programs. And under our, that's the C of their ABCs, under our community program, we have what we call community facilities, and then we have our water and environment programs. Now, this money is eligible for folks who are county governments, municipalities, or not-for-profits. The B was for the businesses in the private sector. This is for counties, municipals, and not-for-profit organizations. In this administration, we have put $13.8 million in grant funds and $211 million in loan funds in rural communities across the Commonwealth. An example, would, and I, I was so pleased that um, Mr. Holscher talked about the opioid crisis. It is a priority of the White House, and it is a priority of ours at Rural Development in Kentucky. So one of our loan grant combos in our community facilities was to an organization called Isaiah House. $452 loan and a $150,000 grant combo, and they have been able to set up a training program and housing in their rehabilitation of folks who are addicted to substance abuse. This is when we can help give them a job. We know that having a job is the single most important thing after they go through rehab of staying clean. And so creating job opportunities through this facility and training program, we're excited about and looking forward to doing more work with Isaiah House. We also have the Appalachian Artisan Center in Hyman, Kentucky, another loan grant combo, $205,000, $57,000 grant to make a community center. We have over 700,000 just this last year that we have awarded to your communities for things that are small, like jaws of life or fire engines and police vehicles. And if you stock them with Narcan, we'll give you some extra points and move you up the chain a little bit because that's helping to fight the opioid abuse. We also can go into a huge amount of money, 23 million, just over $23 million <coughs> loan for the Appalachian Wildlife. Again, trying to create center over in Eastern Kentucky, trying to create job opportunities, visitors in, promote our tourism industry. So when you think about community programs, you not only talk about the things that we do in your community create opportunity, but also about your safety when it comes to your drinking water. Our water and environment programs is something that we have been doing for many, many years. Kentucky has the best rural water distribution. We have more coverage, about 95% of all rural Kentuckians have access to safe and potable water, better than any other country in this nation, partly because we are blessed with great watersheds, but because we work together with you to meet that need. So that's the C of our ABCs and our basic fundamental programs. But you'll see the fourth picture, and that's because I think that none of our communities can be strong if we don't 
deploy true high-speed broadband connectivity. It is a basic infrastructure of farm-to-market roads. It is just like when we took electricity and we strung it along the poles and brought it to the barns of rural America. True high-speed broadband is an absolutely critical infrastructure for economic development in rural communities. There's no reason our rural children should not have access. Now, there's a big middle mile project. You all have heard about it more than once, Kentucky Wired. Kentucky Wired is exactly that. It's a middle mile. It's like a skeleton of pipes across the Commonwealth. It used to be if I wanted to set up a small telco and provide service in a small county, that I had to buy my bandwidth from a major for-profit telecommunications company. Well, as I said, it is for-profit. They're going to make money off of me, and they buy, I buy that bandwidth, and then it becomes very unaffordable for me to build a network at that local level. Well, Kentucky Wired is that big pipe. It is supposed to bring you a more affordable access to big bandwidth. The challenge becomes, just as it was in electricity, how do we build out from that skeleton, that middle mile, to our local communities, to that last mile, to those families that live up those hollers or along those farmlands where we need high-speed connectivity for precision agriculture, where we need it for up the holler for that mother that stays at home to have a home-based business and take advantage of the global marketplace. And so building out that last mile is the most difficult, the most challenging, and the most expensive to do. We do our best at rural development. It is not an easy solution under any, in, in any circumstances. But let me tell you about the programs that we do have. We basically, we have three telecommunications programs. You heard Mr. Holscher talk about the ReConnect uh, program. That was $600 million. Uh, Secretary Purdue has just announced the first three projects. We have 11 applications from Kentucky, and I am anxiously awaiting hearing if we get some of those funded in that loan or loan grant and loan program. We have an additional $550 million that we will be standing up this in December. Now, I suspect, ladies and gentlemen, that that $550 million that will roll out in December will have a very short time turnaround for your application. So if you're not working on your application, go home and start today because you're already behind. And when that project, when that money comes forward, uh, it'll be tweaked a little bit from the $600 million in terms of the rules and regulations surrounding it, but get ready for it. There'll be a $550 million more dollars available. Um, the other piece is Community Connect Grant. That's a small project. It's only a $30 million. It's competed nationally. But let me suggest to you how you need to use the Community Connect Grant. You can take up to a $3 million, earn up to a $3 million grant. Go to a corner of your county. You might go to, like, I grew up in Nifley. He used to be a thriving community there. Judge, it had, you know, mills and stores and everything. Well, now it's kind of a stop in the road, you know? Look at that place. It used to have a post office, used to have a gas station, used to have a country store. It just has a community. Draw you a circle around that. How many residents do not have 10 1, access to 10 1 megabit? Put yourself an application together. We will help you. There's people who can help design these applications to compete for that grant money. Once you go into the corner of your county, and you can bring a true broadband into that corner of the county. You've got a main line running to it. That gives you a beginning infrastructure in your community that can help connect to the others if you go for a reconnect or uh, other funds from other agencies to build out a broadband network. We have this year, we had seven applications to Community Connect into the national office. Again, it's competed nationally. We have two awards already announced. We were only one of a handful of states that had more than one. We had two. There's $10 million. It still has not been announced. We might even get three, so cross your fingers. Distance learning telemedicine. We have $60 million at distance learning, distance learning and telemedicine. It's a $500,000 grant. It's equipment only. Connect your schools to a, a research institution. We had a, a school in Iowa that had a, a, com a company that needed Mandarin Chinese. So they connected. They put a distance uh, learning uh, grant into place, and they're teaching their high school students Mandarin Chinese because it fits, it fits their economic development need. You've got a, a business that just landed in a neighboring community that has about 200 jobs. 
what does that business need to train your workers? What extra um, training opportunities might you might be able to bring to them if you put a distance learning connectivity to their corporate office or their corporate training center around the world anywhere? Think outside the box. We're connecting people. In medicine, what does your hospital need that you can connect through telemedicine to the Mayo Clinic or wherever you would like? Or how do you connect your hospital to more regional hospitals or rural clinics? Distance learning telemedicine grant applications, up to a half a million dollars in equipment. Please look at it as an economic development tool. We have, I guess to tell you, I just got word this morning that next Monday we will be announcing five award winners for DLT in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And I think at least probably half of them or two or three of them are going to be focused on opioids as well, connecting uh, folks in recovery to um, behavioral health specialists and medical attention. So I am so excited about that announcement. Now, so now I want to go to two new programs. Again, that's sort of their basic thing, but this is news for you. I want you to know that FEMA said that in the last three to four years, Kentucky has experienced uh, three disasters, and they put a pool of money together, and then they divided that money up in agency, and the agency then divided it up into programs. We at USDA Rural Development awarded the states. Kentucky was one of either the second or third highest in the amount of money we received. We have $6 million new grant money for our communities in your community facility program. I talked to one of the judges just a few moments and he's already got his application coming my way. So he's ahead of that curve. But that is new money. We don't have to wait for Congress to get a bill. It is in our coffers right now, if you will. It follows again the uh, community facilities, which is the non-for-profits or county government or municipalities. Now, it is only for the counties who were deemed that they were had been affected by disaster. So the red counties, if you're in the red counties, you can apply for this additional $6 million uh, pot of money. Um, but let me tell you, it doesn't have to be the barn to your uh, transportation barn roof that got blew off during a tornado because the idea is this. If you had a disaster in your community, you probably had to dig into your pockets. You probably took money from an, uh, another project that you wanted to do and take care of the immediate need of your constituents. So if the project fits our regular community facilities program, then you can apply for it. So it does not have to be disaster related, although it could be, you know, it could be the roof for the county barn. It could be a culvert or a bridge that's washed out. Um, it could be for something that you were planning to do that you didn't get done, like a senior citizen center or something, because of the disaster money that had to be spent. So it's again for these counties that will, there's 71 eligible counties now for this disaster pot of money. And we are um, excited to be able to have that available to you. So let us hear from you. Uh, then I have another uh, announcement to make, and that is that Congress just told us that we could change the population on some of our programs. I want to tell you, when I was at RUS, I had five population definitions for rural. Jim, they didn't know what rural was. It was a population, 2,500, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, right? What is rural? What do we define as rural? And so every program had a different population guideline. But what we have told us in the Farm Bill is that we can now, through two programs, that community facilities program that I talked to you about and the water and wastewater program, we could go now from a 10,000 population to a 50,000 population. And so when you look at the map and you can see the colored areas, those are the 10,000 population communities that we can serve with CF and WEF. When you d go now, notice northern Kentucky around the Fayette area, western Kentucky, you see a lot more green. We have 34 new communities, 36 I think new communities that we now can, cities rather, that we can now serve under this new population in those two programs. It's a guaranteed loan program, it's not the grants, sorry about that, but it does help you look at larger scaled projects where you can work with the lender, the government backs you up, it makes it a more stable project. So we're really, really pleased to announce those new projects. I will tell you in closing that of this administration, during this administration, we have put two billion dollars 
into Kentucky communities. We now can serve 118 of the 120 counties that we have invested in. We want to be your partner at the table. The role of rural development is to sit down when you have a need and say, can they help us? And if we can on that project, at least we know more about your community and may be able to help you with the next project. None of us can make rural Kentucky strong and prosperous unless we join hands in doing so. And ladies and gentlemen, when you make rural Kentucky strong, you make America strong. Thank you so very, very much.